And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Next verse. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now look at verse 8 and 9. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. So tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. By saying, tell no man, I am the Christ, means you will, will only be permitted to say it after my resurrection. So he puts a limit on what they can say even to things that they knew he said wait until my resurrection why did jesus do miracles why did jesus do miracles he didn't come to the world as a miracle worker mm -mm. moses in 40 years had more miracles in quantity than jesus you know some outstanding miracles in moses's ministry that some archaeologists and critics believe that the exodus did not happen because it was physically impossible in fact people fought moses's miracles than that of jesus what do you mean the water came out of a rock water somebody called them bread from where jesus walked on the water moses brought it out of the rock moses split the red sea commanded dry land to appear took three million people on dry land and after crossing brought the body of water together jesus alone walked peter tried to walk and sang but moses took three million people and crossed the red sea jesus blessed bread and fish and fed five thousand moses threw his hand to the sky and pulled down bread all over the land 40 years three million people in the wilderness yet they had water without any organization they had food they had light they had cold when the weather was hot and they had heat when the weather was cold they can't handle that <laughs> they, they, they said it's not true they can't handle their reality and in the middle of the miracles was among them the greatest unbelief in the bible because with all the miracles only two people believe out of three million with all the miracles so why did jesus do miracles he tells them no man should be told till i am risen from the dead look at mark chapter 7 verse 36 <clears throat> mark chapter 7 verse 36 and he charged them that they should tell no man but the more he charged them so much the more a great deal they published it wow when jesus healed the deaf and the dumb he told them shh tell nobody don't announce it he gave instructions they shouldn't tell i don't know where we get this come and tell the church what happened you line people up to be as a normal service. Come and testify. Come and testify. Come and tell people what God. Jesus kept saying, don't tell. Deaf and dumb heal. Shh. Resist the dead. Shh. Don't tell. It's not showmanship. Now, in a few, we will understand what he meant by don't tell until after I am risen. It's not in the four gospels, all these testimony services and stuff. And it's not in the book of Acts. Only two, Jesus allowed to tell. Number one, a fellow who was mad. You know, that madman, madman. Jesus healed him and told him, go and tell your brethren how God has had mercy on you. The second person was a leper. And by Jewish custom, lepers were ostracized. So Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. Why? Because it is the priest that certifies so that the priest can certify you to be back into the society. Supernatural things don't always have to be eye-catching. You know, every time you overcome temptation is a miracle. I hope you know that. 
Every time you overcome temptation is a miracle. Every time you forgive somebody for a wrongdoing, forgiveness is a miracle. But because it's not spectacular, people miss the point. Every time someone receives Christ is a miracle. Every time. Every time somebody gets born again, a miracle just happened. You know, when you walk in the spirit and do not fulfill the laws of the flesh, that is supernatural. That is miraculous. But you know, because we have glorified temporary things or eye-catching things. We think the testimony of believers must be situated around Jordan jaw-dropping stories so there were instances where jesus said go tell nobody but the audience went about telling everybody mark says he charged them he charged them there's a strong word in the greek it means he commanded them but they disobeyed so question why did he tell them not to tell why what was the point because they're miracles and he told them not to tell we just read but all at that time he said don't tell till after i have risen both in mark chapter 7 and in luke chapter 8 verse 56 give me luke chapter 8 verse 56 mm -mm. and her parents were astonished but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done <laughs> he charged them to tell nobody all right so this is Jairus' daughter. They saw a vision of transfiguration. Tell nobody. They saw that he is the Christ. Tell nobody. He heals the deaf and the dumb. Tell nobody. He raises the daughter of Jairus. Tell nobody. Don't tell. Why? Because he was going to choose people that were going to tell it the right way. He was going to select people that were going to tell it the right way. Because they needed to document and announce his miracles the proper way that's why upon his crucifixion how many people were around jesus everybody ran away when moses walked miracles among three million people only two people believed the testimony of the gospel so why do you think jesus had to handpick according to rw shambach jesus handpicked why do you think he had to handpick some people expose himself to them reveal himself to them and instruct them command them tutor them so that they can tell his miracles the proper way you know today many people when they give testimony they even add salt and pepper a common headache somebody say my neck was broken the neck was not together but when pastor prayed the bone fell in place common headache so because people want to look like god has done a marvelous thing for them so they exaggerate so jesus didn't want all of that he wanted the things he had done to be properly communicated and you will know why there had to be a proper communication of those things he had done after his resurrection because most of the things they were going to talk about will be after his resurrection now acts chapter 1 verse 1 observe mm -mm. acts chapter 1 verse 1 mm -mm. The former treatise have I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Began both to do and to teach. Next verse. Next verse. Mm -mm. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Whom he had what? Chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So he now chooses them to be his witnesses. They had been with him to see what he has done. Just like we read in Acts 1.22, they must have been with him from the beginning to see how he went in and how he came out until the day he was taken away. So they've been with him all through this. They were with him, they saw the miracles, yet they didn't understand the intent for the miracles. They didn't understand why was Jesus doing miracles. Because every miracle of Jesus was a sign of the miracle itself. Every miracle of Jesus was a sign of the miracle itself. Until they understood the miracle, they will misrepresent the sign. Until they understood the miracles, they will misrepresent the sign. Because every miracle of Jesus 
was a sign of the miracle itself. Meaning that the miracles was not an end in itself. The miracles were a means to an end. The miracles were a means to an end. So the miracle itself is not the guy who could not walk that has started walking. The miracle itself was not the blind man who has started seeing. The miracle itself was not the dead man that has been raised from the dead. The guy who couldn't talk has started talking. When the guy who couldn't talk has started talking, that was a sign of the main miracle. The miracle itself is a spiritually dead man now born again. The real miracle was a spiritually dead man now born again through the resurrection of Jesus. If he said, say this to no one till I am raised from the dead, it means say this to no one until the gospel is well understood by you. Don't talk about my miracles Till you understand the gospel. Because the gospel will reveal the intent for the miracle. Are we together here? Yeah. It will reveal the intent for the miracle. So, when they understood the scriptures. And they knew why Jesus came. He now said, now is the time. Say what I have told you not to say. Now is the time to say it properly. Because people can get healed and die and go to hell. People can get healed. Blind eyes can open and the blind man will still die and go to hell. A woman's womb can be opened. She takes in triplets and she can die and go to hell. So the miracle was not the end. The miracle was a sign of the end or a pointer to what was yet to come. Are we together here? Yeah, it was a pointer. It was not an end in itself. Please stay with me, I beg of you. Mm -mm. So he said, tell no one till you have understood the gospel. They can get raised from the dead and remain spiritually dead. Somebody can be physically raised from the dead and remain spiritually dead. They can see physically but be spiritually blind. Their deaf ears can be open physically but they are spiritually deaf. But while those things were happening in the four gospels and in the book of Acts, the twelve did not understand the second aspect of it. So he said, wait until I am raised from the dead. When your heart is opened, when your eyes are open to the scriptures, then you can tell these miracles the way they ought to be told. So upon his resurrection, look at the book of Acts. Every time they are talking about the miracles of Jesus, they ended up in his resurrection and salvation. Every time they talk about his miracle, they brought it to his conclusion, which is the resurrection and salvation. Please pay attention. <clears throat> Glory to God. To his resurrection and salvation. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now, every time, whether in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4, 5, 6, Acts chapter 10. In fact, look at Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Let me point something out to you. Let me just give you an illustration. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. For God was with him. Then he says in verse 39, Acts 10, 39. And we are witnesses of all these things, or of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hung on a tree. 40. Have him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. 41. Not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us. Who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead? 42 now. <clears throat> and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Now this is the end point, verse 43. End point. 43 to give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission that is the reason for the anointing that went about doing good 
and healing all because the end product of that is salvation as a result of his resurrection. Please, are we together here? Salvation as a result of his resurrection. Until that is understood, the miracles will be misrepresented. There is no physical miracle or physical healing that is eternal. There is no physical miracle or physical healing that is eternal. None. But the new birth is the finished work of Christ. The ongoing work of the Holy Spirit is an eternal miracle of God. The new birth. This is how a physical miracle should be seen and understood. And this is how the apostles taught it. This is exactly how the apostles taught it. So in Matthew chapter 8, Matthew, a disciple. Matthew, an apostle. Matthew, an eyewitness. See how he writes the miracle of Jesus. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. Mm -mm. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick. Look at verse 17. If you miss it, you shouldn't have come. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases. When did he take the sicknesses and diseases? When he died. Because Matthew is quoting from Isaiah 53, verse 4, 5, and 6. But Matthew is quoting a text of scripture about the resurrection of Jesus. His death... His resurrection. He is reporting an event that happened before the event. You didn't hear that. Matthew is reporting an event that happened before it. Matthew is talking about an event that happened before Jesus died and rose again. And he's saying this event happened because of this event. This event happened because of this event. That is, he healed the sick and cast out devils because he will be the one wounded. He will be the one to bear the iniquities and our transgressions. He will be the one to give us a spiritual healing where we are restored to God. So, this healing he's doing is a sign of the spiritual that will happen upon his resurrection. Now, Matthew, an eyewitness and an apostle, Matthew that was with Jesus understood the intent for the miracles as a sign for the miracle. Are we in the building? The intent for the miracles as a sign for the miracle. Now, stay with me. Stay with me. Mm, stay with me. Stay with me. Oh, yeah, bada, shaka bada. Now, Matthew is talking about an event that happened before Jesus died and rose. Look at how he linked them together. He linked the healing and miracles to the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Where he bore our sickness and infirmities. In other words, Matthew is saying there's a physical sickness and a greater one, the spiritual. There's a physical sickness and the greater one is a spiritual one that Jesus bore on the cross till he died and rose. And so, the physical sign points to the greater one. This is why he told them to wait till his resurrection so they can present the truth about his miracles the right way. Matthew writes this, not when it happened, but years and years after when his eyes opened and he saw why Jesus did what he did and why he said what he said. Matthew, I mean Luke 24, 44. Mm -mm. Are you with me? Luke 24, 44. Please stay with me. Mm -mm. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Now, we will look at John chapter 20 in a moment. So, every miracle of Jesus pointed to the miracle. So, every miracle today 
must also point to the miracle. You didn't hear that. Every miracle today must also point to the miracle. While for them, it pointed to a future miracle which happened when Jesus rose from the dead. He became the sinner's advocate. He became the bearer of our infirmities. Even though you may be physically well, but without the life of God, you are spiritually unwell. Even though you may be physically healthy, but without the life of God, you are spiritually sick. In the resurrection, he healed you and I, restoring us to God. He put all our faculties, spiritual faculties in use. Now we are alive. Now we are born again. Now we are no longer spiritually deaf and dumb. Now our heart is spiritually active and effective. No more, no more bound by fear. Now we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba Father. Now the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Now we have received the adoption. We are now sons of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Now we can walk in the spirit because of the resurrection. The sign of that are his physical miracles. His physical miracles. Now, in his resurrection, when we receive miracles today, it's also a sign pointing to what has already happened to us. When we receive a miracle today, it's a sign pointing to our spiritual miracle at the point of salvation. And the sign never stays for life. The sign never stays for life. But what it points to is eternal life. This is the part many get wrong. Look at John chapter 20 verse 25. <clears throat> John chapter 20 verse 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Of course, we know who is talking here. So as believers, we should celebrate the greater miracle than the signs. We should celebrate the greater miracles than the signs. Are you in the building now? Yeah. That's why they came back from evangelism shouting, wow, wow, glory, wow, wow. The demons were obeying us anyhow. Wow. <laughs> the demons are subject to us through your name. In Luke chapter 10 verse 17, let's read it. Luke chapter 10 verse 17, 18, 19, 20. Mm -mm. And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Next verse. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You only saw demons obeying you. Me, I saw Satan himself as lightning falling. That's nothing. That's nothing. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Next verse. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. Don't rejoice in the sign. Don't rejoice in the sign. Rejoice in what the sign points to. In this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven that means spirits obeying you is a sign for the real thing that has happened which is the miracle of regeneration this sign shall follow those that believe in my name they shall cast out devils it's a sign that you are born again so don't rejoice in the sign but rejoice in what the sign is pointing to which is eternal life. Are we together? This doesn't mean you shouldn't believe for miracles. But know why miracles are done. Why should you rejoice? You should rejoice because you are born again. You should rejoice because of the new birth. You see the emphasis? That's why he tells them, tell no man. There is a proper way of presenting signs and wonders. And there is an improper way. The moment the signs and wonders are about the man of God. About the ministry. The moment the signs and wonders are about the oil. About the handkerchief. About the prophetic word. You are misleading the people. 
The moment the signs and wonders are about the altar of the man of God, you are misleading them. There's an improper way of reporting it. The moment is about the fact that I entered the service that day. I knew my time was there. The man of God said, the man of God said, I saw the God of my prophet. You miss the point. So he asked them to tell nobody yet until the resurrection. Then you will know why the miracles happen. That's why when Peter and John healed the sick in Acts chapter 3, and people are celebrating Peter and John, Peter and John said, look not on us. Look not on us. It's not by our power or our faith this man is walking. It is the faith that is in him in how God raised Jesus from the dead that has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Don't look on us. We are not some spectacular people. Don't look on us. Okay? Now, when they said to Paul and Barnabas, you remember? <laughs> you are Jupiter and Mercury and they started pouring libation. The gods are come. The gods are come. Peter and John, they tore their clothes and said, no, 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 no. We are men of like passion. This thing is not about us. Once miracles are focused on the man doing the miracles, the entire point is lost. The entire point is lost. They tore their clothes. No, 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 no. Don't do that to us. We are exactly like you are. We are men of like passion. Why? Because they wanted the people to focus on the miracle itself, not on the sign. Are we still in the building? You know, it's good for a preacher to do that often. When people are trying to make you look like you are the greatest, sometimes disappoint them. Tell them, no, no, there's nothing. I'm just as ordinary as all of you. It's healthy. It's healthy not to get to a point where you begin to take the credit and begin to overestimate yourself. It is healthy you keep telling people, it's not me. I am exactly, we are men of like passion. Sometimes I get sick like you get sick. Sometimes I lack money like you lack money. Sometimes I get tired like you get tired. There's nothing. I get tempted like you get tempted. I get weak like you get weak. Sometimes there's nothing. We are all putting on mortality. But what I know keeps me going. So don't look on us. Stop focusing on us. It's not by our power. It's healthy. Very healthy. So miracles that happen in our ministry, we must know is because Jesus rose from the dead. And that miracles are to point to that resurrection. Miracles are to point to that resurrection. So while the physical signs will fade up, they will fade off. Every physical sign will fade off like they always do. All of them. <laughs> Not one person Jesus healed and raised from the dead is still alive. <laughs> Where is Lazarus? Whom Jesus raised after four days. He died again. There's nobody alive today that Jesus healed. They all die. No sign is permanent. Because signs are to point to the miracle. Where is Jairus' daughter? What of Lazarus? But those who receive eternal life never die. Oh, Daba. The day you receive eternal life, you pass from death to life. No more death for that believer. This is the greater miracle. Look at John 20, 30. John chapter 20, verse number 30. Uh -uh. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. Please pay attention. Which are not written in this book. Next verse. But these are written. That you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God and product and that believing you might have life through his name that's the essence of the miracles to point you to a greater miracle which is the life of god remember everybody that john only handpicked seven of jesus's miracles in the entire book of john he only recorded seven miracles of jesus only you know john was very he cheated the rest he came from superior revelation. Seven miracles. He selected seven to write about. And all the miracles were written intentionally by John and intelligently. First miracle. Turning of water to wine. Wine refers to the new birth. So the turning of water to wine was Jesus communicating that there will be a new birth. That there is wine that is bigger than natural wine. And that is the new birth. Okay? So, Jesus said, Madam, it is not my hour. That means 
the real thing I want to do is not this wine. And the hour for that real wine, which is life in Christ, is not yet. And then he gave them the wine as a communication pointing to the miracle. The wine was a sign that pointed to the miracle of eternal life. The second one John wrote was the noble son. Noble son. Where he says, except you see signs and wonders, you shall not believe. You sh Just like the Exodus experience in the book of Numbers. The third miracle is John chapter 5. The fellow at the pool. And Jesus said, if you continue like this, a greater and worse sickness will come on you. If you continue like this, running around looking for physical miracles. What he was telling me, there's something greater than this miracle. In John chapter 6, five loaves and two fishes, communicating to them, I am the bread of life. In John chapter 9, the guy who was born blind, and then in that verse, Jesus was communicating, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The sixth miracle is John 11. Lazarus raised from the dead. Jesus said, if only you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Lazarus will rise again. She said, I know that he will rise again on the resurrection day. Jesus said, what are you talking about resurrection day? I am the resurrection. I am the life. Resurrection is not a day. Resurrection is a person. I am that resurrection. Meaning if I enter your heart, resurrection has entered your heart. And when you are raised in the spirit, you never die again. That's the sixth miracle. All of them were signs. The seventh miracle, which is the last miracle, is Jesus himself raised from the dead. In other words, every miracle was written in the light of the resurrection. That is why he told them to tell nobody yet. So the resurrection of Jesus presents physical miracles in the right way. The resurrection of Jesus presents physical miracles in the right way. So in Luke 24, 49, Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Pay attention. Luke 24, 49. Thank you, Lord. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. He didn't just tell them what to say. He told them when to say it. He told them when to say it and how to say it. So in ministry and in teaching the gospel, you must first of all know what to say, why you are saying it, how you are saying it, and where you are saying it. Observe what he has done. He has therefore committed these truths to these men. And so we have become their letters. By their teaching and by their letters, we have become the disciples of this man that Jesus spoke to. Observe what is happening. Jesus committed his life, his ministry, his mission to 12 men who were capable or meant to be capable for us to follow them by the things he taught them. So it's funny today when someone gets up to say something different or new. Huh? The point is Jesus chose the men. They were handpicked who will present his truth. You can't just wake up in Nigeria and say something new. No. You can't just wake up in Kenya and say something new. Or in Cambodia. Or in Ghana. Someone once said... What I'm about to tell you, even the disciples of Jesus did not know it. Uh -uh. Even the disciples of Jesus did not know it. And the people are still sitting down. <laughs> Another one said, the apostles knew it, but did not preach it. So if the apostles did not preach it, how did you know it? People are just funny. A preacher once said, you cannot limit yourself to the Bible. 
The Bible is just to give you a head start. <laughs> he said, you now rely on the spirit. <laughs> so I asked one of his followers, which spirit? He said, Holy Spirit. So I asked him, where is the spirit? I can't see the spirit. Then he said, the Bible says, uh -uh. I said, the Bible says, I thought you say, we can't rely on the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, we must therefore restrict ourselves to what was taught. What was taught. Brother Paul says, if any man comes to preach anything outside of, look at it, in Galatians chapter 1 verse 9. Mm -mm. In fact, let me start from verse 6 as I round up the service. Are we blessed tonight or what? Mm -mm. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. Next verse. But though we are an angel from heaven, Paul is saying, even if we come back to say anything different from what is documented, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be anathema. Let him be cut off. I just showed you something. The physical miracles, everybody saw. Yet, he gave them a different interpretation from the normal. People have seen miracles. Jesus called the twelve and said to them, this is the way to present it. The miracles they saw is not the end in itself. It's a sign to my resurrection. He gave them specific information that the public didn't have. That the public didn't understand. Because if you had asked those who were there, Jaros, what happened to your daughter? Oh! He gave a promise and he has fulfilled it. God will never allow me to see she. He will never allow me to see she. He came and raised my daughter back to life. Okay? What of when finally she died? Because eventually she still died. So that is not the intent. That is not the focus. That is not the report. He has misrepresented the miracle. Because one day the daughter will die like we said. But there is eternal life which is the promise of the scriptures. Eternal life. So they will misunderstand it. But when he explained the written word to the twelve, then they wrote the miracles properly. Because you cannot come through the book of Acts. You cannot read through the book of Acts and arrive at Jesus the miracle worker. No. No. If you really read the book of Acts very well, you will arrive at Jesus who is raised from the dead, exalted, and now gives salvation to all those who believe. That's the message of the book of Acts. That's the message of the four gospels. So they believe the witnesses of Jesus and they became the witnesses of Jesus unto us. The ones that he has chosen. So Christ disciples us through men. Christ disciples us through men. Someone said, I don't follow men. <laughs> Dr. Gabriel, I follow only Jesus Christ. <laughs> he asked him, where is Jesus? In my heart. Where? Where in your heart? What's the proof? He says, the Bible says, uh -uh. the Bible again. I thought you don't follow anyone. Who wrote the Bible? Men wrote the Bible. Someone spoke, you know, wrote something on my Facebook page a few days ago. They called my attention to it. That, that, <laughs> no man is my spiritual father. When I was teaching, 
He was typing it on my screen. You know, there are those of them that spy on our liberty. No man is my spiritual father. Only the Holy Ghost is my spiritual father. Yet he is always following what I teach. Hypocrite. 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 If no man is your spiritual father, what are you wasting your data on my page for? Why don't you lock yourself in the room? Let that Holy Ghost teach you inside the room. God teaches men through men. That's God's pattern. Anything outside that is fraud. Fraud. He's always following what I teach. He can't rest. He's always, it's like some of them come on my page and they write heresy. Heresy. But they are there burning their data with heresy. Inside them they know that what this man is saying is the truth. But their religious captive mind is what is troubling them. They are mentally agitated. So we pray for such people and we keep quiet. We give them a little time. With time they will come round. Oh, they will come round. They will be the greater, the greater proponents of what we preach. They will, we will are carrying it with our mouth. They own, they will carry with their head, with their mouth, with their legs. They will carry the whole thing and be running with it. It's a matter of time. We're waiting for them. <laughs> Let them insult us, run around us, abuse us. At the end, they will come from behind. Our, our great grand 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 disciples will disciple them. You didn't hear what I said. Our great grand 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 disciples will disciple them. It, it will happen. Except it is not Jesus that saves them. So we are not moved. Keep coming to the page. We are happy for your keep coming to hear heresy. Don't stop. Keep coming. Come insult us but stay and be listening. We know your types. We have seen your types. I've had people come physically to this church to tell me I hated you like the devil. But now I am following you and I wonder why I hated you then. Uh, it has happened not 10, not 20 times. So we are patient with people like that. We are not angry. We know where they are coming from and we know where their journey will end. They will be discipled by our great, 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 great grand disciples. <laughs> Oh, glory, glory, glory. Show me, I ask somebody, show me a letter Jesus wrote. Show me one letter in the Bible that Jesus wrote. He said, Revelation. I said, shut up, shut up. He said, the seven churches in Revelation. It's Jesus that wrote to them. I said, see ignorance, disgracing in public. It's John who wrote the book of Revelation. It's not Jesus. There's no book that Jesus wrote. All the books in the Bible were written by men because God's pattern is that men will disciple men and men will teach men and men will raise men. When he descended, when he ascended, he has, when he descended, he ascended up on high. When he, when he rose from the dead, the first thing he did was not to talk about his death, burial, and resurrection. The first thing he did, if you are the one that died three days and rose, the first thing you should be doing is telling all the things you saw. But when Jesus rose, the first thing he did was he gave men. He gave gifts to men so that men will tell men about what has happened. Jakotala, that is the pattern. That is the pattern. Men are discipled by men. How can they hear without a preacher? Preachers are men. And how can he preach? except he be sent. So if you are among those that are saying Holy Ghost is your teacher, you don't have any other teacher, you are a hypocrite. You are a complete hypocrite. And a hypocrite that is undressed in the public. That's what you are. That's what you are. That's what you are. Every man is a product of an influence of another man. Every man, even Jesus, sat under John the Baptist. Even Jesus sat under John the Baptist because that is God's pattern. Jacotana. Stand up, let's close. Stand up, let's close. We continue tomorrow. Glory! Glory! Somebody get him blessed. Shout glory! Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice, in the service online, on television, all over the world, on radio, revelation, knowledge, floods your heart, mindsets are corrected, imaginations are brought down, in the name of Jesus, we cast down strongholds and we command the light of the gospel to illuminate your heart and mind in the name of Jesus. Barriers broken, obstacles terminated. We release you into the full revelation 
of Christ. And we rejoice for the gift of eternal life. We rejoice for the gift of regeneration. And we give you praise, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen.